Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to show you how you can bring SharePoint lists into an Access database. So on the screen, I've got the end product where I've got three SharePoint lists. You can see them there sitting in this Access database. And then I've created a query. If I just open the query, it's bringing those three tables together and allow me to do a calculation field there. I'm just going to design, you can see how that works. So those are the three SharePoint lists. Just close that down. So what I want to do is basically open a, a blank access database. So create a blank one. I'll call this um, not database five sales review. For example, create that just gives me this blank table. Now the SharePoint lists that I have, if I go onto the SharePoint site so you can see where they're at, I've just added them onto my home page. So this list is products, customers, and sales. Those are the SharePoint lists that I want to come and get. So if I go into access, what you have to do is create, instead of new table, SharePoint lists. Now you can create one from scratch. These basically create a list on SharePoint that you then have to edit in SharePoint it would be linked to this, but I've already done that. So I've already got the list on SharePoint, so I'm clicking into that. It picks up the link to my SharePoint site. You've got options there of importing the whole thing into a table in Access, which will not be linked, but I want these to be linked, so I'm going next. Then the whole array pops up, all the lists that I've got, and I just need to tick the ones I want, which is that one, that one, and that one. And then I can click OK. And then those three tables pop in like that. Now it also brings in some extra columns that you might not want like these, but you can just hide those columns. If you don't want to see those, you can hide them. Same with, with this as well. You can hide any column you don't want to see, you can hide. Now in addition, yeah, I'll save that. In addition to doing that, it also brings in um, the relationships that you create on SharePoint. So I created these links on SharePoint. So these are sitting there already. Now, what you can't do in Access is you can't change any of this. If I cancel that for a second. You, it says it's a one to many link um, and that's the link that it's using. But you can't actually tick any of these options here in Access because that's these have been created on SharePoint. But what you can do, if I just close that, I will save the changes is you can create a query based on these three tables so if i do that create query design just drag these into the query by example grid the links come through so what i want is so customer i want the company and i want the product and i want the quantity from the sales table let's have a quick look at that so that gives me the company and the products and the quantities sold. So now I'm going to do a calculation field to work out what is the total price. Now in there, I'm going to use the expression builder so I can bring in the correct information. So basically I want the products price times in by the sales quantity, sales quantity field scroll down and find that double click so that's what i want so you can type that if you know what it's what the tables are called etc but it's probably easy to come into the expression builder to do it click ok to that let's get rid of the expression word i could have done that in the expression builder let's put total sales and then this needs to be formatted as currency so if i go up to the property sheet and just format that just type the letter c or do it to currency close that close this add tables and then run the query to see if it works so that does work looks okay so i'll save this as qry total sales so now what i want to do is add another sales on sharepoint and see if it picks it up so I'll just close this down Go on to SharePoint again, 
and then this is the site now I need to add a sales so if I open this table new item it opens the, the list but I don't want to go and create a, a list an item what I need to do is get into the list area and then edit the list from the list so this is about me creating a new um, item like that individually columns I don't like that so what I've got is the options down here to just click into these tables which will then give me the option to click in edit in grid view which I find a lot easier me personally so you get the same information coming up but it's, it's like a list like a spreadsheet so putting the item in there customer ID I've only got three customers in that table so I'll go for customer two that is a lookup field so when I tab off this record that should pick that up and the product same thing it's a lookup field so if I click on product three that will pick that up and then I'm going to type three items that tab in off that and then it brings in the information lookup fields so now I've done that if I come out of um, well I've come out of this list so it should now pick it up I might have to refresh the data but if I go back into that um, sales there it is it's picked it up so now I've got four items if I go into that query that's picked it up three of those at 500 quid so that's 1500 quid so it's picked it up so let's have a quick look at the list itself so if I go and create a new list there's a couple of places I can do it I can go to this option here where it says my lists I can go back to home and then go to site content and lists whichever way you go you can end up in the same place or a similar place so this is um, what the lists I've just been looking at there now um, if I go see more you go into lists it's asking me to install a desktop app which I've already got so you've got the option there of new list you can use um, edit any of these ones or you can create a list from a template option which is what all this is but I'm just going to do a very quick list to show you how I did that so I'll just call it um, I'll do the, the the sales one so if I do sales one you can pick a color for your list and you can pick an icon if you do it through this app so this is through Microsoft lists create it's going in my list I don't want it to go in my list I want it to go into this SharePoint site so I'll click on create so it'll create sales one and then you're basically left with the option of creating columns you can click add column and these are the different choices that you've got and a couple of the columns I was using was the lookup option so if I if I just pick up um, text first off I'll call it product so it's product gives you all the information here single line of text no default save I'll just create the column product this is a default column you can change the name of that so I'll just call this um, sales ID that's what it's going to be save like so and then product add column this is going to be I want this to be currency so this will be the price of this currency so I'll just call it price and then you've got currency it's in pounds okay save that and then so that's product price and let's go for quantity so quantity is just a number i'll call it next i'll just call it quantity qty and then save so i'm doing a sales one table so i should have really done a lookup on this one so product is just going to be me typing a product but if I wanted to look up let's do a look up on the customer so let's do customer so this is going to be a lookup so you can see how I did that a lookup column next so I'll just call it customer so I want to look up so it's looking at a it wants to look at the customers table the list should I say TBL customers 23 I've called it now that's going to be the customer ID that's okay but I also want more options so I want additional 
information not just the id i want it to bring in the company as well and i'll just save that so now that's a customer so i should have done that on the product one but it doesn't matter now if you want to go into more details about the list you've got the option at, at the top there settings and then that will take you into list settings microsoft lists which comes back into sharepoint settings this is the same area and if i come down you can see your columns um, the title column there if i click that it hasn't remembered that so i'm going to go sales one id and leave everything else now if i say this look enforce yes i will enforce that so and it's and it, it's got to be um it has to be entered and unique values so i can't have two number ones for example now when i save this it's going to ask me or tell me it needs to be indexed which is okay okay to be indexed so i've done that one so in this settings area you've got a bit more scope you can also create columns in there so i've got sales id sales one id product price quantity customer customer link so they're lookups um what else could i have in there that's it really data I suppose create a column i'll just do that so i can show you um sale date and then that's going to be date and time uh, i don't want it to be the time i just want it to be a date requires this yeah let's go for required um it's not unique date only is already selected so i don't need to mess about with that you can have it set as a default for today's date if you want so it'll already be today's date which you then have to change for the sales date but i'm going to leave that blank and then click ok to that so everything's looking good there there's my list sales one settings so now come back into the actual column headings, ready to enter some information. So if I click on this edit in grid view, so I'll go sales ID one product. So that's, um, it's not a lookup. So I'm going to have to type the product. So, um, generators 500, I think price 250 again these sort of things you want as a lookup really customer right it's customer one so that's a that's a lookup list so i selected a one that that should fill in it uh, as soon as i tab off this record sales date today's date and then when i tab off it should put the customer in there which it has done that was a lookup looking at customer one from that other table and that's all i've done when i've created those other three tables i've spent a bit of time to be honest in the settings area to get the, the field right and sometimes you need to delete a field to um, get it right but this first column this first column is always set for you and sometimes you have to like I did there do it twice before it picks it up and there is also a bit of a delay sometimes when you're changing things it doesn't always see the information but now I've got this list if I go back into access I should be able to create a, a link to that I should pull that down so same as before i want it linking now this one's going to be in isolation but this should be um, sales one there it is tick that and then next okay should bring that in sales one but it's, it's not got a lot of information just that one bit of information but there's the extra columns that it brings in just going to hide those out of the way for this and along with that one so that's all I want to talk about in this little video is how you can create SharePoint lists and then grab those lists and bring them into Access and then use those tables in Access, those linked tables as they, as they become, to create queries and then use uh, calculations in the query to, to generate information that you might need in Access and then going forward like so. So these can also have forms created on them if i click on that and create form so if i want to input data at this end so at the moment uh, if i go to the we're on the customer number three so i just do a new customer so customer id will be four and then that can be bob black 
company fix it for example so I've just created a new customer so that's now in this table Bob Black but when I go back to SharePoint then close these down when I go back to SharePoint and go to customers that record that I've just created there in access is already in this table so whichever end of the list that you do whether it's in SharePoint or whether it's in access affects you the other one because it's the linked link tables but now I, now that's all I want to talk about so hopefully it's been of use thank you for your time and I'll catch you on the next one